As you know, I'm Keisha Dennis. Her big dance. sis, yeah. Little bro. Little big bro. I mean, you're like, what, <laughs> six, <laughs> nine? Six, nine. Yeah. Okay. You know me very well. You know, I am the president of The Elephant in the Room. It is a mental health charity that you support so much, and I love you for it. I appreciate you. And uh, for those that don't know, I have Rob Covington with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Downs claws the rebound. 5.25 to go in the first. Minnesota 16, New Orleans 15. Covington gets the shoot. Covington gets a steal here. And coast to coast, an easy bucket for Rocco. Three stops in a row here. Covington off the screen, the one-two to the cup. And we're at TSU, Tennessee State. Somewhere really my, comfortable my for you. <laughs> How my do you feel home. being here on this court? I mean, a lot of battles was, was going on in this court. You know, we went through a lot of fights with guys. You know, a lot of good games, a lot of bad games. You know, a lot of a lot of growing. Mm -hmm. Overall, like our time here has been. Exceptional. Like this is what helped mold me to where I'm at now. Like it gave me that extra grittiness. It gave me that, you know, sense of you know playing with a chip on my shoulder. And I've always had that my entire life. So, you know, coming to the school that just added on to it, and then you know taking it to the next step. Like, you know, if I can go back and do it all over again, like I wouldn't change anything. Like I would still come to the same school, and I would not take any more, change anything about my route. So, you know, this is what helped lay my foundation. It's what helped me, you know, grow into the man I am today. So. You know, I'm truly thankful for what TSU has done for me, you know, on and off the court. So. It's dope. It's dope. I just like TSU. I think I've grown to know a lot of your friends. <laughs> I feel like I'm an honorary TSU. Right, you're an alumni. <laughs> I'm a tiger, <laughs> in a way. Okay, well, of course, we chose to come here, you know, because it's somewhere pretty comfortable. And um, I always say that you always want to be in, like, a comfort zone when you have to talk about something that's, like, not so easy to talk about and of course today in this case it's mental health so not always you know not always not always when you when you've accepted it and you've you know embraced things mm -hmm. don't matter where you are like this is just like i said it's a good stomping ground but anywhere would have been fine like i think that'll encourage other people to just kind of open up any and everywhere any and everywhere so tell me how you feel about that topic mental health uh, I never knew the seriousness of it. Um, mental health is something that's really, really, you know, big, especially, you know, being an athlete. Um, a lot of people don't understand the stuff that we go through on a day to day. They just see us as, you know, Rob Covington, an athlete. Like, you don't know what's going on behind the closed doors and, you know, problems that we deal with. We deal with problems just like everyone else. Um, you know, when things not going your way, you don't understand it. Like, it messes with you because, you know, you've been programmed so long and you not understand, you know, significant things about what goes into it. So, you know, ultimately it's just about, you know, figuring out honestly what what it is that's sitting up here like altering your mind and what's causing that kind of cloud that's, you know, overbearing you at times. So, mm -hmm. you know, I had to sit up here and do it um, this past season. You know, this is first time I've been hurt that long and the first time that, you know, I've missed that many games in my entire career combined. So, you know, ultimately I didn't understand what it was. And, you know, it to me it seemed like something so minor, but mm -hmm. in actuality it wasn't. Like, you know, the severity of what an actual bone bruise and, you know, the other things that were wrong with my knee. And then, you know, to go back and then, you know, have a setback that had to require surgery, like, they just didn't understand. So, like, all the stuff just compiled and, like, you know, me not being able to be out there on the court and, like, watching the, our playoff hopes just, you know, go away, you know, knowing that if I was out there, like, I could sit up here and contribute to what my team is doing and, like, maybe we could have been able to get over the hump, you know. And it's just, like you said, all them different emotions just eat at you because literally you do a routine, you wake up, go to the gym, you rehab, you go home, you relax, and you're basically in the house the rest of the day, like, then on top of that, it's being cold and like you're not knowing the, the city like that. So, you know, it's not a lot of different things that, you know, really plays a part and that really helps. You know, mm -hmm. if you just cooped up, right. like you said, your mind goes crazy. And so, would you consider it being in a state of like close to depression or like stressed or like stress? Um, just 
like comfortable and yeah, familiar. Yeah, comfortable, unfamiliar. Like you said, you never, you never witnessed that. So ultimately, you know, I've never endured, you know, that much pain and that much frustration at one point, and you can't sit up here and do nothing about it because you gotta listen to your body. Right. So you know, normally I'm able to, you know, play through certain things, but some things you can't just play through. Like mm -hmm. I've always been a guy that, you know. I get a minor bruise or something that's achy, like, you know, I'm all right, take time out. No, that's not something that you can sit up here and do. Like, it's more severe than what people actually exactly. think. But when people from the outside looking in, they're like, oh, it's just a bone bruise. Like, yeah, it's a bone bruise, but it's a significant bone bruise. It's like, it's deeper than what, you know, if you go back and look, like, a bone bruise can cause a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. So. You know, training staff, you know, they, they did well. They, they made sure that, you know, I was taking the right steps. And I was on the progress to returning. Mm -hmm. But then I had that setback yeah. to where I went down to the D League and I worked out with the team for three days. Then I fly, come home, <clears throat> come home for the day. Then I go go back up top in, to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. and then once I get there, my knee swells up. Mm -hmm. And I had not one swelling session, like, ever okay. since, like, the whole process. Like, it had to get a little bit, but then... It'll go away. But no, like when I literally walked in the training room, my knee was puffed. And it was like they didn't understand why. So then I had to go get a special MRI to figure out what exactly was wrong. And I, that's what determined, helped me understand what was actually wrong. And it was actually more wrong than my knee than a lot of people sat up here and, and knew. Right. So, and so, I mean, we've talked before, and I know you said, like, I mean, that is physical pain. Mm -hmm. And, like, the physical pain caused more so, like, emotional. It causes all the emotional, mental, mental all and everything. That. So what do you do to kind of cope with it? I mean, now, um, you know, I've, I've began seeing a therapist. Uh, That's big. Not yeah. to mention that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that was, to me, the biggest step. Um, ultimately, I always dealt with problems because, like I said, I'm the oldest of my brothers, and I always want to be the strongest, and, you know, it's a lot of different things. Like, I always, people always look up to me because everybody feel like I'm the strongest in the group. So I, I carry the weights of others, and mm -hmm. that's when, like, it got overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So then when I felt like I couldn't sit up here and carry the weights of others, like, that's when it started to, like, you know, mess with me the most. Because, like I said, I can help you, I can help other people, but if I can't sit up here and help other people because I can't help myself at that moment. You can't like, that's when, it, Yeah, you can't sit up here and do for that. So, right. you know, ultimately... I just sat up here and like the first step was me, you know, I had to send my family away. Um, I had to send my girlfriend, you know, her and her and the baby, um, had to send them back to Nashville because my my head was so cluttered and, you know, things was not sitting well with me that, you know, I needed a clear space. So, you know, it was just literally from the time I had my surgery, which is April first, to the time I came here, I sat up here and I, I was by myself. Mm. Like, my mom was asking me, my girlfriend was asking me, like, hey, do you want us to come up there? Like, I'm like, no, I'll mm. be fine. Like, I don't want no, I didn't want nobody there. Like, because mentally, I needed to get myself together without the help of others. Right. So, were you seeing the therapist at that time? I actually didn't start seeing a therapist probably until like three weeks after my surgery. Really? So, what was like the final, like, I guess the breaking point? What made you actually go see the therapist? Like, what encouraged you? Because a lot of people, they're scared. They're, you know, the stigma around mental health. They're like, I oh, snapped, I don't want to see. Like, at work. You snapped. Yeah, I snapped at work. It was basically a day where um, trainers, were, trainers was getting on, on my nerves. Like, and it was just, like, they was just being themselves. And just put to the point where it got under my skin. And I was just like, man, you know what? Fuck this. Like, I can't, I can't deal with this right now. Like, and me, I'm not a person that's sitting there and, like, I'm not a lash out person. Mm -hmm. But when people started to see, like, my demeanor change and the way I carry myself, like, if everybody starts noticing, like, my head's down, like, and I'm not looking forward to what's mm -hmm. going on, like, and if I'm just like this, like, just in a zone, like, staring at it, that's when people know something's wrong with me. So, because ultimately, I always keep my head held high. And I sit up here and I always, you know, I keep my eyes on what's in front of me and never look down. Like, and during this time, like, for a very while, like, I just kept, I kept myself in this little bubble of, of misery, kind of. Because, like, I wasn't playing basketball. Like, it was being taken away from me, you know. Things wasn't working out the way I wanted them to. And for this, to me, it felt like it was so simple, like, just hearing it. But... 
you said, when you go back and do research, it's not so easy to, you know, understand. And then to have, work your way back and doing everything, and then you had a setback to where it's like, all right, now we got to sit from, we got to do this. We got to start from scratch. Like, you got to go have surgery, and then you have to build yourself back up. So, ultimately, I had to go, and like I said, for that, I was in Minnesota from April 1st to, like, May 17th almost, so a little over six weeks. And, you know, ultimately, they wanted me to stay there mm -hmm. um, a little bit longer, but I was like, no, nah, I got to go. Like, I, I have a guy that I worked with in Nashville, like, I want to go be at home, like, my comfort, like, mm -hmm. and I'll sit up here and I'll be able to take care of it, because now I'm getting over that, that hump, like, mm -hmm. now I can go back into my natural environment mm -hmm. where I feel more comfortable and I don't have the same clouded thoughts that I had before. Right. So, that's when I told them, they was like, ultimately they wanted me to stay there, but I was like, no, I gotta go home to my family. Like, you know, my girlfriend's son, um, and my girlfriend's son, like, that's where, like I said, my comfort zone is at the time. So, you know, I ultimately, that's where I wanted to be, you know, because when I had to send them away, it was just like, kind of like a piece of you is you know gone yeah. away but then it's like you knew you had to do I had what to do was the best right thing because the way that it was going like in the way I was feeling it was like I was hurting them yeah because of where I was feeling like and that, and that like you said I didn't want to sit up here and like keep beating down keep beating down and you know tearing down just because of how I'm feeling mm -hmm. like I go back and I look at all the little things and it would be like why was I tripping on that like like it's all a bunch of different things that was sitting there getting into my skin and it was not that big of a deal. So then you make an you make an issue of small things and blasting them as, as something big when you go back and you look at it like me looking at it now, all of the stuff that I was mad about, like it was all since small. Mm -hmm. But in that mindset that mind that mindset and that mind, that space, yep. honestly, like it feels bigger than what it is. Of course. So ultimately like once I begin seeing the therapist and I only you know had, before I left I only had three sessions with him. and within those three sessions I kind of tapped into you know my own my own self mm -hmm. now I'm understanding that you know some issues I had like was you know internal mm -hmm. um, some were genetic you know and some was just real minor yeah. So, like, we tapped into, you know, a lot of different things that go back to my childhood. Like, you know, the voids of not having your real father in your life like you want him to, but yeah. you have a significant, you know, replacement. Like, my stepdad is, like, I always tell him, like, he's the best thing that ever happened to me. He so, is pretty cool. <laughs> and, like, my mom, in that, in that sense, me and her like this. And, you know, we yeah, go right. through... We go through, we had a couple of falling outs, but, you know, overall, like, you have to go through all that stuff to ultimately build your, it tests how strong your relationship actually is. And, you know, like I said, it went from, like, traumas of stuff that I've endured as far as, like, you know, school and relationships and, you know, other things. Like, you know, at times, I just felt like I wasn't good enough. Like, but mentally, on it outside people didn't know that of course yeah so it's like did you like Rob I mean he's a basketball player life has to be great everything has to be good everything has because to you be upset and not and not only did I have to sit up and I had to open up to you know myself I had to tell my coaches I had to tell our GM like mm -hmm. you know I'm not right like yeah. and and they seen it because the kid that I was when I first got there I wasn't that kid during that stretch mm -hmm. and they ultimately seen the shift and now I was talking about how you know the journey that, I, that I'm on like I don't know like what's going on mm -hmm. and when I don't know something like that's not that's a problem mm -hmm. so whenever I have uncertainties and doubts like that's an issue so you know they were they actually you know inquired about you know the team therapist and you know I sat mm -hmm. down and and talked to him about like a lot of different issues and they were I, all really supportive. Mm -hmm. Because they understood like how val how valuable I was, not only as to the team but as a person. Mm -hmm. Like that's one thing that's dear that's good about like the way the coach was. Like mm -hmm. he wanted you to be good on the court, but he made sure that 
you have the right means off the court. Like basketball is, you know, something that is temporary, but life is not temporary. Yeah. So you got to make sure that not only are, is your life together, but, you know, that will help you on the court. And everyone could sense that everything wasn't right at home. Mm-hmm. Like, not just at home, but in general, my just in personal, personal life. life yeah. So they, that's when the whole, um, that's when the whole, the interviewing about, you know, the therapist and just talking, like, I sat down and I talked to him and, like, instantly, like, going back over everything, like, it all brought tears in my eyes because I'm like, mm-hmm. I never paid attention to that, none of that. And then he gave me the professional side of seeing things and, you know, talking about a bunch of different things that I never knew about. Mm-hmm. Like, not no techniques and ways to sit up here and, you know, acknowledge things. And, Just unpacking that stuff. Yeah. That we've been holding and, on to for so long. And unboiling it and even, you know, like I said, problems within relationships. Yeah. You know, it, every, everything that Just I do, everything stems from something. So I sat up and we talked literally for, I'd probably say, first session was like probably like three hours really yeah first wow. session was probably like three hours he actually missed an appointment because wow. he was he was intrigued to really mm-hmm. you know keep tapping into like the deeper sense of everything and um the next one was probably like two and a half mm-hmm. and then the next one after that was like three and then we did we met one more time and it was probably like an hour and he just seen like from the beginning of the set, the beginning time that I seen him, mm-hmm. to the last time he seen my complete energy shift mm-hmm. because I had unloaded all of that, mm-hmm. you know, bag that weight that was sitting up here holding Wait. me down. So he could sense it, and he could sit up here and tell within, you know, my my demeanor. He could sit up here and like my my upbeat, like because when we first started talking, like he had noticed this. Like I was sitting here like this, and as I was talking about everything, mm-hmm. it was like looking down like I hardly look at him but then by the fourth session like I'm sitting here with my head held high my shoulders back posture, and everything yeah. like my posture and everything is like is not holding on to none of that it's stuff progress. so he was like man I could already tell by how just by how you walked in here man you're good mm-hmm. and so you know over time like the techniques that he gave me I just sat up here and I've been applying it every day anytime something like you know makes me uncomfortable I'm like I just said, think about this, and or I break this down. I'm like, ah, that's not, a, it's not all right. It's bad. It's not that simple. It's not that simple. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not that bad. Like, you, that's one of them clouded judgments that you know, yeah. sitting up here trying to creep their way back into it. But you ain't, you know, ways not to do it. Right. So then it's like, I went the whole summer, not having no issues, and my health is good, and I've been working my way, and I've been doing the right things. Now it's like, okay. I wouldn't have been able to do that if I still had any of that baggage or any of that weight. So I'm like, okay, ultimately, it all worked out. And then when I go back to the team, like over this past month, and we've been working out and stuff, everybody sit up here and says that, man, Cub, was you good? Like, mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. And everybody senses like how my demeanor and everything changed. I'm, pod, I'm back. I'm back to myself. Mm-hmm. And that's ultimately what helped us become even better. Mm-hmm. That's what's going to help us become better, but just because. I can get back to being myself and not have that weight on my shoulders yeah, as right. I step on the court because, like you said, it wasn't going to do nothing but just hold me back. And, yeah. you know, ultimately, you know, coaches and them came to me about, you know, a role that they want me to be in. Like, and you can't sit up here and be that be that person that they want you to be if you're sitting up here holding on to all the negativity. So, you know, ultimately, it helped with, you know, my health. It helped with my spirits and everything. And then, you know, the biggest thing was me, you know, I would, over the past year, I always talked about how I wanted to, you know, get back closer, get closer to God. Mm-hmm. You know, I've always had, I've had him in my life since I've been in college. Like, I've had him in my life, period, but I, n- I don't know him like I know him now. Mm-hmm. Because, like you said, being a kid that grew up in sports, you know, my time was typically, you know, sports-oriented on weekends. So I yeah. never really had the time to really go into church. Right. But my grandma made sure she still, you know, she still did did her due diligence when it came to you know knowing a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I just never was a kid that grew up in in the church because our our family was so, so driven by sports. Like my dad coached, my brothers played, I played. My mom was always there to support us. Mm-hmm. So everyone was always you know every weekend like 
it was something going on. And then we knew a lot of people that was in the sports as well. So mm-hmm. we would sit up in this big support system. Mm-hmm. And, you know, ultimately, like, that's how we built our, that's how we was built up. So then, you know, once I got to college, it kind of is what, you know, took me over that, that, dump, that hump. Mm-hmm. So um, my junior year is really once I started to really tap into it. And I always say this, March 26, 2012 is the day when I got the biggest chills, second, the second biggest chills of my life. Um, because it's, we was in FCA camp, and that went right up there. 155, we sat up here and was just talking, and people was delivering their messages and how God had changed their lives. And, you know, by them allowing him into, into their lives, like what he's done for them, and, you know, by always praising him like he's going to make sure that every situation no matter, you might not like like the path but he's always going to make sure you love the outcome mm-hmm. so you know just listening to that and then I go back and this whole time I'm reflecting on my life like you know, ultimately I hear people talking about you know hey you could be you could be you know this you could be that you could be an NBA player mm-hmm. but it's like me on the inside I was like eh like I said, I, I go to a smaller school, like, you know, ain't nobody really gonna give me a chance, like, that's that, that's that negativity that creeps, but then I'm like, as I keep listening, I keep hearing people sermon, and I keep believing, I'm like, man, I can really do something, I can really do something, like, and ultimately, that day is when I sat up and I allowed it to be the first step of change, yep. and ever since then, like, you know, I've always lived by, you know, what what God has said and like ever since then but now it's like I've tapped into it on a whole different scale mm-hmm. like ultimately first day I went to church the first day I went to church all summer was always fourth and that was the day Brandon got baptized yes I haven't missed a day since and that's when I saw you go up to the altar when they called without hesitation I literally was that day of that message I was in tears from the minute he started his preaching to mm-hmm. the end, when he sat up here and walked and asked us to come up there, I was literally in tears because I could never, I couldn't hold any of that back. Mm-hmm. And when I got up there to see Brandon walk, mm-hmm. and I see T. Fred, and mm-hmm. I see other friends, like Rob, mm-hmm. like just to see that and then to share that experience, you know, have my mom and my dad there, mm-hmm. that was the first stepping stone of me, you know, fully embracing it all. And I saw your mom, like I sat like next to her and I just rubbed her back. I could tell like it was like a kind of a weight was lifted off her shoulders. She knows everything you've been through and she's been there since day one and she kinda was just like, I'm proud of my son. Like, because it's not it has it's not forced, it's like you ultimately allowing him to sit up here and take control of your life and lead the way you're supposed to and he's gonna make sure that you're good. And he's not gonna put you in a situation that he's not gonna make sure you're gonna come out of. So each and every each and every Sunday, like I said, I've missed not one day. No, I take that back. I have missed one because we was in the Bahamas. But I still went back and I watched that, that sermon. I've ne- I'm not going to miss a sermon and message. Mm-hmm. I've even began doing, read, going back and looking at the Bible studies. Like, mm-hmm. just being more cognizant of what the message is that I've missed. And just unfolding it, it actually helps my habits like in general like I don't sit up here and I don't eat bacon I don't eat pork anymore I don't you know I don't eat out as much as I used to I'm starting to change my whole diet um, I'm focusing on more fruit vegetables um, proteins a lot of anti-inflammatories mm-hmm. anti-inflammatory diet so I'm shifting my whole focus I began drinking juices that I never would have thought I would have been drinking, like <laughs> the naked drinks, the pomegranate drinks, like, because all these stuff I understand that so they're going to help, change. it's a lifestyle change, so now it's like I'm trying to shift my focus and shift my energy to, you know, complement what I want to do in life, yeah. so ultimately, like I said, it's just, it's just something that, you know, I felt inside that I wanted to do, but I never had the energy to do it, and now it's like, you know, God is showing me each and every way like I can sit up here and I make positive change and even the impact I can do with others you know mm-hmm. just by you know sh- being an example of what you know mental health can do for me. Yeah. 
Right, right. So, you know, it can it can sit there and it can break you down, but you also can sit there and you can get through it no matter what. If you take the right steps, you can sit there and get through anything. And first and foremost, you got to put God in first. You got to put God first. So with you saying that, like, would you consider, like, you talk about putting God first, eating healthier, just, like, having an overall better lifestyle. What would you consider, like, your playbook for, like, coping with everything? Stress, the game, personal life, like, what would you consider it? Dealing with everything, um, I look at it as everything's a lesson. Um, you know, what I endured before, it sit up here and it progress, progressed me to understand that, you know, life can be very interesting or you can make your life interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a difference. Um, a lot of people might be like, well, how is that? Life can be interesting because you don't sit up here and know what's going on, but you can make life interesting by putting God first, and then He's sitting up here leading you down the right path. Right. So it's a big difference that not a lot of people might not, not understand because, like you said, it might fly over some people's heads. Right. But people that understand it, like they can feel, they can feel exactly what you're saying. Right. So, you know, like I said, ultimately dealing with it all is just. You gotta just move on to the next. Like, you take what you didn't do right, or you know, stuff that you know, you learn by you learn by going through the lessons. Mm -hmm. And that's what I said up here, and I've understood that you know, whether it's stress and dealing with it, you know, all the other stuff that comes with it. Yeah, you know, say if hey, we lose a game, like you might be mad or whatnot, but you can't let you being mad sit up here and affect the rest of your time, right. like the rest of your evening or anything. Yeah. And you can't let it lull into the next day. Like every day you wake up, you can't start off with 24 hours. And what you do within the 24 hours to sit up here is the best thing because you can either make it a great 24 hours or you can sit up here and it can be detrimental. Mm -hmm. Like, and the way you go about it and the way you have the positivity and the way you sit up here and do all that is just about ultimately utilizing the best and because like you say you never know what can happen you might wake up one day you might not Absolutely right. so you have to make whatever you're doing you have That's to sit there and be Every mindful day. yes you got to because like i said it can be taken away at any at any moment yes all right well let's take a step back for a second you've mentioned brandon williams a couple times <laughs> and he's your financial advisor for tba sports and I, this year, well, every year they do a, um, a, a summit mm -hmm. every every weekend. I mean, once was it a weekend every year? Yeah, and so, uh, this past year, I was able to partner with TBA Sports for their uh, annual TBA Sports Summit, and I mean, it was really cool. <laughs> it was really cool. Yeah, it was a big event. Um, it was a huge event, and um, he chose a mental health charity, and I know you. And I know you don't do anything for notoriety or anything like that. And um, I know personally that you donated a significant amount to the elephant in the room. And I kind of want to know, like, what made you inclined to do so? Well, for one, you know, I've known you for years. Um, I've seen you and Brandon's relationship, you know, go up, go down. And that's part of, you know, life. You know, y'all are growing together. Y'all are getting a better understanding of, you know, how you are as, as people and how y'all cope with everything. And both sides talked about, you know, dealing with the health health issues and, you know, problems that, you know, go. And we've ultimately had a lot of discussions on it. And me going through what I just went through mm -hmm. to finally see somebody that's close to us, like, trying to bring awareness to it, like it was a no-brainer for me. Like, because I just went through the depression, I went through the stress, I went through the frustration, like, I went through every emotion, and literally all I did every day, like, go rehab, like, it was, it was like clockwork, go yeah. rehab, be at home, and I would sit on the couch, like, wouldn't even be doing it on, on social media, like, watching the games. Out of your routine. Out of your, yeah, yeah, out of your routine, so then it's like, that adds on to it, so... Once I actually got over the whole, you know, the, that whole aspect of it all, like, then I was understanding that what I went through, like, I had to, yeah. I had to go through it. Like, even I tell you and B all the time, 
what y'all went through. Y'all have to go through it because ultimately that's what's going to allow y'all to sit there and really grow. Y'all have to go through mud and y'all have to go through everything to get to that fullest. So, like I said, you starting this foundation, like it, it was a no-brainer because not a lot of people are bringing awareness the way that you're trying to. And a lot of people are afraid to. They are afraid to. It's a stigma around it. Yeah, it's a lot of people are afraid to. my next question. I mean, I know we have, like, other athletes, other basketball players, Kevin Love, Damar, like, they're coming out. They talk about mental health. Do you think that there any, there's anybody else that just wants to talk about it and they're just probably scared to talk about it? It's or? a lot of people because yeah. everyone, you know, don't want to be looked at a certain way, but it doesn't matter what other people sit up there and have, like, to say about anything. Like, what the problems we deal with on an everyday basis, like, people don't know about. Right. And, you know, everybody look at it, oh, he's not focused, or he's not this, he's not that. You don't know what that person has going on at home. Exactly. Not even at home. It could be just in general, in general. around them. Sometimes you don't know what's wrong. Sometimes so, you just don't know. And some people try to sit up here and, you know, take on the weight. Like I said, the same thing I, I did. Try to take on the weight of everything and make mm -hmm. sure... And, no, you got to make sure that you're good as well, first yeah. and foremost, because you're the one that ultimately is trying to carry the, carry the burdens of everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that because once you're trying to carry the burdens of like a lot of people around you, you lose focus on yourself and you stop sitting up here being aware of what's going on with you. And that's what I had to learn as well, like when I went through that whole focus. Like I try to carry the burdens of everybody mm -hmm. because... Like you said, I, I want people around me. I love good vibes. I love energy, and I try to help fix everything around me. But during that process, I kind of lost myself. Yeah. And I didn't know how. No, why? I didn't know why. No, why? But then, once I actually sat down and I tapped into it, it's like, shit. Well, this was all going on. This might be it's something so simple mm -hmm. and so minor, but yet it had a drastic effect. Huge effect, yeah. So, like, I ultimately, I feel like it's a lot of people out there that Definitely. ultimately want to sit up here and talk about it, but are just afraid because they care about what other people are going to have to say or what they think about them. So, but, were you hesitant to sit down and talk to me about it? About you? No, about mental health today. Were you no. hesitant? No. No, I wasn't, I wasn't hesitant at all because, like I said, I, sat, I took the first step. And I was more so hesitant about sitting down and talking to the therapist because... It was like, you know, I had the same okay. same thing I told B. Like, you know, I had the same the same thought process of, man, I ain't no therapist gonna help me get through this. Like, they ain't gonna know what what's going on. Like, how can they help me? They ain't, they don't know what I deal with. They don't know what I have going on. But then, as more and more weight got added, it's like, all right, you know. Gotta do we can, something. We can do something like to try, to like do the same thing and you know. Expect different and they results. came at me multiple times about it, and I was just like, eh. Today is in the team. The team. And it was like you know our trainers, you know, coach. It was like, yeah, man. I sat down and I talked to the therapist before too. He's been really good. He's helped me get through, you know, my father passing and everything, and you know, it helped me, you know, get to that next phase of life. And you know, I was in a dark place and. You know, ultimately talking about things and addressing it all, like it helped me. So I think once I got sat down and I talked to him, I actually admitted that like it was I wasn't myself. Right. That was like the first initiative because, like you said, they came to me before that. But then when I actually realized it myself is mm -hmm. when I kind of took that that whole burden by you taking the first step. Can't nobody else do it. Right. You have to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if anybody else around you is trying to sit up and get you to do something, you're kind of going to fight it yeah. nine times out of ten. <laughs> right. But you ultimately have to want to do it in your front of yourself. And the way I was feeling, it was like, all right, like it's too much. Like I got to sit up and I got to try something. And when I did that, man, that just, that, that burdens, the, the frustration, the stress, it was like a, a soda can. Sat up and I opened it. And I talked about it, and then that that build up that was shaking in the can, like it just released. Mm -hmm. So that was a good feeling, though. It was because like, that very first, that Ooh. very next day, they could tell when I went into rehab, like it was more energy, it was more 
of how I was at first when I first got there. Mm -hmm. Like and just by something so small, by sitting down and talking to him for a couple of hours, I sat there and like everybody can notice like every that everything was different it was about different, it. Yeah. So and the little things that was getting under my skin before, like they wasn't like sitting up here. Like I would jump back at them like you know crack a joke as well. Like, Sounds about right. Because some things like. It would need to be, like I said, it'd be something so minor. Like, our trainers are funny people, and like, they would sit up and they would crack a joke, and I'd be like, yeah, don't play with me like that. Like, mm. it'd be small, it'd be some odd. I'm like, you take stuff wrong when mm. you're in a different mindset. Yes. Sit up here, and now I sit up here, and they crack a joke, and they're sarcastic, okay. like, and they're funny. <laughs> like, sometimes sarcasm works with people, like, sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And where I was before, sarcasm wasn't wasn't one of the things that you know I was open to right, right. like when I first got there I'm like oh yeah like, I crack crack back at y'all but mm. once that shift in my mind it was like that stuff got in my skin and it affected my mood and mm. it affected my energy within me doing what I had to do so like considering where you were before and like your energy and your mindset having Adam Silver come out and say that they're gonna make some adjustments to the league's guidelines on mental health this year, uh, what the 2019-2020 year. Um, do you feel pretty optimistic about it? No, I feel like that is going to open up the gateway mm -hmm. a little bit more. Um, but ultimately, like you said, it's there for us. Yeah. And all we gotta do is just utilize it. It don't even have to be something that could be so. You can't be. It don't have to be on put on front street. It just could be something that you actually just go do, and like it doesn't have to be like, oh yeah, this person is seeing a therapist, or this person is doing this mm -hmm. to you know clear up the head. Like it doesn't have to be put out there. Like, and I think the first step of them actually having the awareness of it, like you said, people had to come out about it because mm -hmm. if they never really came out, a lot of people wouldn't know. Right, and I do think people hearing you talk about it is going to make them feel more comfortable saying, well. Ooh, well, if he can talk about it and he has, like, his life all together, then I may want to, you know, speak about it, too. It will, it will release a lot of different, it will release a lot of different demons and a lot of different energy that you hold on to. Like, God will help you, you know, talk, like, with so many different things, mm -hmm. but you have to acknowledge them first. Exactly. And a lot of, lot, not a lot of people who sit that prayer and are willing to acknowledge it and, you know, put it out there because, like you said, they're afraid of what people Mm -hmm. You can't worry about it's what other people think. You can't worry about what nobody else thinks because at the end of the day, if it's going to help you, forget what anybody else got to say. Mm -hmm. It's going to put you in a better place. It's going to sit there and it's right. going to put you in a better place with amongst your family, yeah. like amongst your friends. Like everything you do every day, like you're going to have a different mindset about it. I sit up here and like before you be sitting in traffic, like man, like oh. different mindset. Now you sitting it now you sitting in radio now you sitting in traffic, you sitting up here, you jam into your radio. Or mm -hmm. I could even sit up here in the time I'm in traffic, I sit up here and I put on a, a Bible study mm -hmm. and sit up here and listen to it. I listen to a podcast or something. Yeah. And it, like I said, it's a different it's a different focus. Mm -hmm. And you know, ultimately like I've I've started reading more. I don't watch as much TV as I used to. Um I got I'm starting to tap into actually my spirit more than what I used to. And that's what's helping me take that shift off of feeling like I gotta carry the weight of every bird. Mm -hmm. Like, no, it's okay to sit up here and put off, you know, see other people's stuff. Like, if it's yeah. not a major influence on your life, you don't have to sit up here and feel like you gotta find a solution to every single thing. You have to be allowing others to sit up here and talk about it, like, and other people to acknowledge it, uh, find their way of figuring it out. Mm -hmm. You can't sit up here and put you on you, everyone else. So what I'm hearing you really say is it's okay to talk about mental health. Yeah, it's okay. Like, it is. All you have to do is just be willing and not right. care about what others have to say. What's the attention that is going to come, like, because you always know that people are going to talk about negativity. He was gonna, yeah. There's going to be negative comments talking about, oh, you know, he's talking about mental health. Mm -hmm. um, he just suck it up and, you know, you go out there the and time. do it. Like, um, no, this is like something that's real let's serious. Let's address this elephant in the room and let's talk about exactly. mental health. Exactly, yeah. and that's now, like I said, DeMar DeRozan, like you said, Kevin Love, and more people are going to come out. 
That's good. That's more people are going to come out, and now that there's awareness on it, like, people don't have to sit up here and feel like they got to put it on front street. Mm -hmm. Like, by them saying what they said, mm -hmm. that put the league on notice because they was submissive to it. Mm -hmm. And then you got all these other people that came out. Mm -hmm. Like, if you've seen the story on Dennis Rodman, mm -hmm. like... Yeah. Incredible. His story. And but I haven't even finished I... watching the full thing. Like, just Chills. a little bit. And then Chills. you hear about all the other stuff, like these football players and, yeah. you know, all these different people that sit up here and are significant figures and talk about what they endured and how they cope with certain things. Like, if they would have had the outlets that they, we have now, like yeah. the awareness on it, mm -hmm. it could have been a lot, a lot of different people's yeah. mindsets could have been a lot different. How long he, like, they held it in. It's been so long. Yeah, it definitely was it up. It can change, like, like you said, the guidelines of it all now is like people are being put on it to it now. But this has been going on for years, mm -hmm. and you have a lot of people that have not like died from mental health, right, like right. from overdose and right. trying to cope with everything. It's, it's like medicated. it's mm -hmm. it's it's not. This is not something that's not been around for so long. Like this has been around for generations. It's just now we're addressing it, and now you have people that's in there trying to put it on front street, and me bringing awareness to it as well, just like Kevin Love and Lamar, is just going to open up the outlet to every other mm -hmm. people. Like, well, you know, it's I commend so you, of course. To me, I feel like you even bringing it up and talking about mental health, it just makes you more of a better player on and off the court. So. It does, because like you said, people don't understand what I dealt with off the court, like, no idea so <laughs> no idea. like where I'm at like that's typically what held me being out longer yeah. was the fact that I was holding on to so much negativity and so much that was caught on my like me me sitting up here talking about this now like we put this out this content out nobody around me would sit up here now mm -hmm. only a handful of people know mm -hmm. that's exactly why I came to you first because I knew we talked about it you were real open to me about mental health and the things you went through and I mean physically, mentally, emotionally, it's like the, the draining and I'm like, if more people were open and more people, you know, had somebody to talk to about it, I feel like, of course, it would change the stigma and would encourage people to go get help and hearing, I mean, your idolized people say, oh, you know, Rob Covington, he went, he saw a therapist and it worked for him. They may feel more inclined. Like, you know what? Let me go. You know, I want to go see what that's about. So, that's big. It takes, the, it it takes the weight of a lot of, like, the world off your shoulders. Like, you don't feel like you have to sit up and do everything on your own. Like, you try to do that, you try yourself crazy. That's what I was sitting up here doing. Like, I was trying to sit up and do everything for others and myself. Mm -hmm. But in that process, trying to, you know, I lost sight of myself and then me not being in the place where I am, like, not playing. And what I love has been, ta been taken away from me so easily, like, yeah, it puts you in that state. Yeah. But then it was like, all right, like, let me try something different. And, you know, amongst me doing that, having so much time on my hands also, like, it helped me tap into other things, like other interests as far as like off the court stuff. Like I've done more charity stuff, I've done more, you know, meetings with a lot of different people. I opened up, opened up some new business ventures. Mm -hmm. Like I've learned I've I've utilized my time instead of just being at home and sitting on the couch. It's helped you grow. It has. And ultimately I'm a much better person than what I was months ago. Yeah. Like the energy I was having, the stuff that would get into my skin, the like none of that can affect me now. Mm -hmm. Like anytime I sit up here and like something doesn't go plan, like, okay. Like we'll figure out another alternative. Right. Rather than be like, man, like, no, it's a whole different approach to it all. Mm -hmm. And I yeah, look at it yeah. as ultimately what you're what you're doing now, um, and how you go about it. Like me going to church and listening to Bishop Walker, um, Amazing. He's amazing. Listen, he is life reason, He is the reason why the shift has blessed my life the way it has because what he said from the very first time that I went to his church and the crazy part about it, like I, 
like I hate to say this, but it's actually true. Like I never was really was a fan of Mount Zion like that when I was in college. Mm -hmm. But man, it was I didn't understand it. Now, I mean I didn't understand it then compared to now. Yeah, that sometimes things happen like with time, and you have to yeah. learn to appreciate something. You have at the to right learn time. to appreciate, it. and it was like. I know Bishop would sit up here and laugh at me about this. Yeah, he'll but, probably get you. <laughs> yeah, he definitely would, but that's this is the truth. Like yeah. this is you tapping into like I said everything. You can be honest. Yeah, you can be honest about it all. And when I was in college I always thought it was like kind of, you know, over the top. Like and I'm not a person that like deals with over the top, but then that's me focusing on not the right thing. You're not focusing on the message. You're not focused on the purpose. You're not focused on all the benefits that comes with, you know, what Mount Zion offers. I love Mount Zion. Now, I sit up here and I understand it completely. And I literally wish I was going to Mount Zion for years. Mm. Because I understand it now. But back then, I did mm. I was still, I was young. I was still trying to figure life out. Mm -hmm. I was still... Like a lot of different things that was going on, but now it's like where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. I'm back 100. percent right. I'm back to you know being myself on the inside. So what you're telling me now is you're gonna kill it this season. Yeah, <laughs> no <Absolutely>. doubt. <laughs> and like I said, ultimately, me being in that space now, like nothing can sit up here and take me out of this joy, this happiness, like mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. That makes me happy. Because, you know like I said, you, I've embraced everything. Like, everything's a lesson. And everything is uh, a joy to sit up here. And you might look back on it right now and be like, man, I really endured all that. Mm -hmm. You look back during that time and you have that mindset. But now you sit up here and say, I got through all that. Right. Like, I beat it. Right? You beat it. And you're you moving it. forward. Yeah. So now it's like you have a whole different energy about yourself. It's like, all right, I beat that phase. What's I'm next? ready for for what's next. What's next? Right. Like, and it sit up here and trains your mind to be more positive, be more like optimistic about certain things, mm -hmm. and you really focus on like ultimately just being the best you. And being can't the nothing best you. And ultimately, you can't become the best you if you don't know. You. Strong words. Yeah, it is. Well, let's switch gears a little bit because while I'm here at TSU, <laughs> I've been dying to see the Covington's Lounge. <laughs> so, can you please go show me? <laughs> yes, yes, we can. Great. Um, my <laughs> I was to show y'all last weekend, but you guys seen it. Uh, online but you haven't seen it up close just yet but <laughs> i feel privileged <sighs> all right you know, you know i'm here this later <laughs>
I don't think nobody in there. History. Seven. I was, I was six, but I passed. What? Yeah. Wow. Oh. So I would easily hit the 2000. Yeah. And there's only one other person that's done that. Here? Yeah. Do they have a The all time, like, time you, won't, you won't see the free catch the all time league score because he's, he's got over 35 play points. That's Dick, that's Dick Burnett. Like, he was a, a classic killer. Yeah, this. That's it. What's the name? That's so crazy. What's your superpower? Superpower. Hmm. What's my favorite superpower? I want to pick. <laughs> which one? Which one is better? Uh, your favorite. It's my favorite character. I like Dragon Ball Z. So my favorite characters oh my are God. Goku. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> I, I'm gonna switch and be like my favorite powers I like to have. I like to have Goku power. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, favorite restaurant, favorite food spot in Minnesota? Uh, I would say Zalo's. What's Zalo's? Y'all go there. Y'all come in there. Come, come mm -hmm. there. It's a nice little restaurant. Cool. Alright, um,. Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich or Popeye's chicken sandwich? See, I ain't never had Popeye's <laughs> Chick-fil-A. So you're loyal. Yeah. Okay. Um, favorite reptile? Snakes. Of course, no brainer. I just got my third one. Oh my God, I'm already scared. <laughs> okay, um, so tell the people something that you want them to know about you. Something that they want them to know, um, well, my hometowns, but nah, switch gears. Uh, my favorite thing to do is bowl. So outside of basketball. Good. Outside of basketball. So that's number two, basketball and bowling. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting more built in my house. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm ready. I'm ready. Because <laughs> you know, I've been, I can, you know, I can bowl a strike or two every now and then. When <laughs> no real. When I say I don't plan on being home next year. I can't wait. Listen, you have no idea. I can't wait. <laughs> I probably, like, honestly, I probably put, like, it's going to be off the record, but I probably put, like, a million dollars 